The Disappearance of Paula Jean Weldon Welcome back to another episode of Spooky Hut the home of all things scary and hair-raising on YouTube. From the most thought-provoking unsolved mysteries to the creepiest ghosts and ghouls, we have all the spooky content you will ever need. Subscribe to the channel now so you never miss any of our latest and greatest videos. In today's video, we are going to be taking a look at the disappearance of Paula Jean Weldon. Let's get to it. For the most part, disappearances in forests have been attributed to individuals just wandering off to the wrong places and then getting into situations when they should not have been. Whether it is them being involved in natural hazards or being devoured by wild animals, very rarely has anyone tried to relate the missing individuals to a common cause. However, sometimes the nature of a disappearance and the frequency of them occurring in a place makes people wonder if they really are just the work of nature. In addition, it makes one wonder if foul play is involved. One such set of disappearances have been those that occurred in Vermont in an area that is known as the Bennington Triangle, infamously dubbed after the Bermuda Triangle. For decades, dozens of people have gone missing in this area, sensationalized as a hotspot of paranormal and supernatural energy. Stories of Bigfoot, UFOs, and serial killers are common in this area, surrounded by Glastonbury Mount. One such case that was so mysterious that it even inspired a horror novel was that of a Paula Jean Weldon. Let's take a look at how an ordinary college student went on a hike and then vanished entirely from the face of the earth, setting the stage for the disappearance. Paula Jean Weldon was a college student studying at Bennington College in 1946. She was multi-talented and was interested in things ranging from hiking to playing the guitar. During her time before the disappearance, Paula was going through a depressive episode that her friends took note of. She was sadder than usual and did not go to Thanksgiving back home either. So when she decided to tell her roommate about the hike she was going to on December 1st, 1946, Everyone thought it was Paula's way of rejuvenating herself. Little did they know, it would be the last time they ever saw Paula back on campus. The Real Life Red Riding Hood Paula Weldon has been dubbed the Real Life Little Red Riding Hood because of the way she was dressed before she left for the hike. She was wearing a red parka jacket with fur, jeans, and sneakers. It made little sense for someone to dress this lightly when going for a hike in the winters when snow was imminent. Many speculated that Paula underestimated the change in weather, as it was only 10 degrees Celsius when she left. However, soon after, the weather turned harsh, going as low as minus 12 degrees Celsius. The extreme weather was the first thing that might have contributed to her disappearance, but as we will see, it is certainly not the only theory put forward. The search begins. Worries began to grow when Paula did not return back for her classes the subsequent Monday. Paula's family was notified and a search began. The first area they checked was Everett Cave, as it had been a place that Paula expressed she wanted to hike to. However, when a small team led by a guide reached the cave, Paula was nowhere to be found. In fact, there was zero evidence of any sort that Paula had ever been on that track. After talking to several people in the area, many told investigators that they had contact with Paula or a girl who matched her description before she went missing. Some of her college mates also reportedly gave directions to Paula about the long trail that she wished to go on. It is reported that Paula decided to start the hike anytime after 4 p.m. By that time, though, darkness began to descend and the weather was becoming worse. It was a recipe for disaster. The search intensifies. Neighboring states are notified. After the initial searches yielded no result, Paula's picture was circulated around newspapers. All taxi drivers were informed of the disappearance, and the state police of New York and Massachusetts were also notified. However, as there was not a defined area where Paula might have gone, a formal search was not started. Volunteer searches that involved students from Williams College, who were familiar with Paula's hike path, went on searches themselves. Once again, though, there were no signs of Paula at all. Soon enough, the police started getting more involved in the investigation. At one point, over 500 people were searching the area for Paula. Even aircraft were used to direct investigators to areas that were not yet searched. Sadly, though, many speculated that the investigation was poorly managed and was extremely inefficient. Even the college president claimed that there was foul play involved and Paula's body was being concealed. However, the investigative report talked about how the police went above and beyond to find any clue leading to Paula. 
They even dug up the ground in an extensive area in hopes of finding any remains of her, but it was to no avail. Paula Weldon had disappeared into thin air. The theories, harsh weather or alien abduction. Initially, the theory comes to mind is that Paula could not continue on her trail due to the harsh weather and was lost in the thick and dense woods, ultimately freezing to death. While this theory is very plausible, the utter lack of any evidence at all in the vast area that was searched makes it shaky. An animal attack was deemed nearly impossible as well as there were no signs of torn clothing, a missing shoe, or a limb. No blood was found in the area searched as well. In fact, searches that were conducted even after the snow had melted yielded no result. As time went on and people found no answers to where Paula went, wild theories about an alien abduction became increasingly popular. This was backed up by dozens of UFO sightings in the area where Paula went missing, leading many to believe that there was a different type of natural at play, the supernatural. To this day, the disappearance of Paula Jean Weldon remains a mystery. The utter lack of any evidence is the main reason why many consider this case to be so baffling. That, coupled with the sensationalized supernatural theories that inspired the novel Hangs a Man, has led people to be fascinated by this case to this day. With that, we've reached the end of today's video all about the disappearance of Paula Jean Weldon. Which of the theories in this video do you think is true? Maybe you have an entirely different idea of what went down. Get involved and let us know in the comment section below. If you enjoyed this video and found it interesting, make sure to leave a thumbs up so we know to make more for you. Also, subscribe to the channel for even more awesome videos just like this one. As always, thanks for watching. See you next time on Spooky Hut, where we always have tricks and treats for you.